Uh, just want to make a quick video real quick. So I am repairing a Pokemon Silver cartridge. Uh, here is the original cartridge itself. There's a lot of things that are wrong with this. Uh, let me just move everything out the way real quick. So if we look at the PCB itself, there's a little bit of damage on here. And that is completely my fault when I first started soldering. Uh, I damaged it real bad. So you can see the solder tip the order solder pad has lifted and is no longer good there's a lot of corrosion and on the back it seems to be okay in the back but yeah we are going to uh, take all these ships right here well not really we're only going to take this ship right here let me put it on the board real quick and give you an explanation of what's going on so this little chip is the ROM chip the read only memory this has the Pokemon server game integrated into it. It's all the code is in here. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna swap it out with this one right here. Uh, by doing so, we are basically take, changing out the game entirely. So everything else, I do not need to change out. Let me explain why. Uh, I need a better Poke tool. Uh, we'll use, where's my tweezers? There you are. So, this right here is the RAM. The RAM is only the random access memory. It just basically is quick memory that tells the game, hey, I pushed the left button, we need to move the player left. Or I pushed the A button, it needs to select something. That's what the RAM does. This, I believe, is the amp chip. It amplifies the output so that way it can actually transfer into the Game Boy by these little headers right here. This is a crystal quartz oscillator this is the heart of the game this actually keeps track of the time so any base clock based events this little thing right here is the reason why there is working time so we're going to be changing this out right now all right to safely do this i need to be clear of everything in terms of my little workspace so i can't have anything in the way this is a very tedious project i can damage the board I'm hoping that's not the case. I also, I also need a very fine point solder, uh, solder gu gun air tip thing. <laughs> I don't know what they, I don't know what these are called, but all I know is that. So when I'm heating this up, I need a very thin nozzle to gently heat up each of these pads, so that way they get nicely thoroughly melted, and I can actually lift it off. I also have flux. Flux is very important when doing these projects because the flux will prevent it from damaging the actual PCB pads. Uh, the pads are very important because it actually makes contact with the board to send information. So I am now going to attempt to lift it off. Once I have it lifted off, I will switch to my soldering iron and actually fix it. Here we go. I am so worried. Oh. First things first, tip is on while it's still cold. It's very important to put it on when it's still cold because I don't want to burn my hands with sec third degree burns. Not second degree, this thing can give you third degree burns. If not, comment down below. Okay, here we go. I am so scared. Okay, so this needs to be going to the side. This needs to be set to level seven okay I gently I'm gonna gently grip you okay set you in the middle I think I'm in frame barely okay you just gotta take my word on it it's just gently grip you got it So when I'm doing this, I'm making sure I see the solder points turn glossy and crystal, like mirror finish. That's how I know that it's ready to lift. And I'm moving back and forth in a circular motion. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, power off. That went 
very quickly, and I'm kind of scared. Okay, hold on. All right, let's clean this off. This little spritz bottle is full of 91% isopropyl alcohol. I just want to say that for the record. So now, it's still extremely hot. I cannot actually touch it. So we're just gonna have to clean it up. Okay, so I think, yeah, I can actually touch it now. So I cleaned it up a little bit with isopropyl alcohol. Now I can take it off its little clamps. It should be dry now. And yeah, that seems to be okay. Let me look closer up. Looks like on the camera, everything seems to be okay. I'm gonna check off camera as well. Seems to look okay. I do see the solder lifted up. The solder, the solder, not the solder pads, the solder. Okay, so what's next is I'm actually gonna bring out my soldering iron and I'm actually gonna clean up these pads. Uh, I'm also gonna put in another line of flux. Where is my flux pen? This is not a flux pen, this is a flux syringe. So, a little bit goes a long way and you do have to clean it. This is advertised as a non-cleaning flux. I still clean it regardless because I still want it to be protecting my solder pads. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, I am going to unplug... Oh gosh, my phone. I'm going to unplug this. I don't need this anymore. This can go away. Hey, okay. I need my soldering iron. Wabba! Here it is, my soldering iron. It's a cheap Chinese one, but still works pretty fine. I do need to clean out the tip because this tip is severely damaged, but I think it will serve our purpose for now. So, what I am gonna do is just set this thing up, put my sponge in here, slide it down. Okay. Clip you off. I got some solder on here that I don't need that you come off, throw away. And I I can't touch this directly. If I touch this braid while I'm heating it up, this is gonna burn my hand. Copper transfers heat beautifully. And I say that with the utmost of importance. So very carefully I am just gonna straighten this out with a nice straight tip. Okay, now I'm going to actually solder. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna clean this out again with some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure everything was nicely fresh and desoldered. It is very important I have it as flat as I can be. Any solder that's still sitting on it can actually mess up the orientation of the chip. Okay, so. Okay, we now have a very clean looking pad. This will be a lot better if I had some solder paste. Not, not solder flux, but actually solder paste. I actually have solder into it. This is where things get absolutely crazy because the legs on here 
are very small. So I gotta be very careful on how I solder these in. I may have to just line it up just right. Like, I don't feel comfortable with how that is placed. I'm just gonna finagle with it until it moves. Seems to be lined up perfect. Okay, I seem to have got it perfectly lined up. How do I keep it still is the question. Okay, let me think. Because it's so small, I have to solder it in a different way. And it's a way that is very unconventional because this is a very fat tip. Let me check what I got. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. Okay. I got a solder kit. I got solder tips. First things first. Oh, hold on. Give me a minute. Okay. I figured it out. I think. I just got to. This is too hot. I can't touch it. I'm going to change the tip to my soldering iron. Because this is just... Get out the way. No, you're too hot. Get out. Get out. Get out. Okay. Okay, I think I found a soldering tip worthy. There's a soldering tip in here that has a very nice tip, a nice little bevel, if you will. You can barely see it, but there is a noticeable bevel right, yep, right there. There's a bevel, which means that this is going to be clean. Knowing I have a clean soldering tip, does it fit in? Oh, there's a little bit of a flash. Hello. Okay, change of plans. That does not want to fit for some reason. Okay. Do I have anything else that is similar? I do. I do have something similar. It's this piece right here. Oh, I got considerably darker. This one has a bevel as well. You can barely see it. But it's just a slight little bevel. Just like it is clear. I can. Yep. Fantastic. Let's tighten you up. Okay. Turning you on. I have to be. Ow, oh, that's hot. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, on the chip, you can see a very small hole. Oh, right there, right there. That little dot is pin one. Pin one is always abbreviated as a little triangle on the PCB. Just want to point that out. And now we are starting the hardest part of my career. Is perfectly lining this up. Oh, 
Okay, it's lined up perfectly. I am gonna use some tape to hold it down. I don't have the proper tape for this exercise, but we are gonna risk it. This is the part where I get very anxious. And I have my phone on so we can document everything I'm doing. So you can barely see it, but I'm putting in tape right here. So you go. That seems perfect. I'm gonna hold you down. Dang it. Gonna hold you down like that. Okay. Whoa, it got dark, dark. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna check some real quick. I barely got on video. Yeah. Wow, you can barely see it. Okay, so I just desoldered everything off camera. I just want to point it out. This is all done off camera. And this is now ready to go. And I made sure the orientation was right. So now that's all cleaned out and everything, we got a DMG Game Boy with a backlit modification screen. So we can actually see what is going on with the cartridge. Now I just want to see if this works. There's not the game here. So this works. It should load up this Pokemon game right away. And I'm hoping I put in the original Pokemon Silver and not the original game that was in it. Okay, Nintendo signed is up, which makes me very happy. 1995 to 2000 Nintendo. Oh my god. Is it actually playing? Oh my, oh my god, wait, it's Pokemon, it's Pokemon Silver! Okay, let's load it up again, let's take out the cartridge, oh gosh, put you back in it. And if it works, it should turn it on again. Loads up the Nintendo logo. Very nice. 1995 to 2000. Let's see the character sprite. I think that's more important. Yes, 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 yes. We did it. Pokemon Silver is officially repaired. Let's recap what we just did, okay? Let's recap what just happened. So this was the original board, and it was heavily damaged right over here. Let me move in a little closer, and then you'll see right here is a better picture of it. So what we did is we took the components off of this Game Boy, mainly the ROM cartridge, the ROM chip, and we transferred it into this Japanese game, which was a compatible board. It was very important. Let me show you why. I should have done this before, but I'm saying this now. Uh, this is gonna be read as DMG KGDU-10. This one is a DMG KGDU-1. They may say different PCBs, but these are still 100% compatible mainly by the ROM chip itself. The ROM chips should be the same and the overall layout. So that is the utmost important. So now you guys know that these two boards are compatible with each other. You can change out the ROM chips. That does it for today's video. We have successfully installed Pokemon Silver onto a brand new board that is not third party whatsoever. This is all 100% Nintendo hardware. Yes, 
Nintendo has, this is all 100% original. This is all 100% Nintendo. They can't do anything about it, I hope. But yeah, this is all done. And let's top it off. This, oh no, that is not the cartridge. Here is the cartridge for Pokemon Silver. That's the cartridge. So what I am going to do. I just wrote it down when it was refurbished. Now they know. Everybody knows. This video is living proof that this was refurbished on this date. Whew. I'm so happy it's done. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, make sure you hit comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you guys know when I upload future videos. Other than that, keep on repairing, guys. Thank you.